morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. So take a minute and imagine that you're an interviewer right now. You have two candidates in front of you. You don't know how to judge those candidates and you're only supposed to take one of them. So then you give them both a situation, a situation that you ask for them to come up with a solution. The first candidate starts analyzing the situation. They take about 30 minutes, they consider all the details, and then they come up with a solution that is supposed to work. But the second candidate has already faced a similar situation and gives you a solution that should work for this situation too. So who do you think would be a better fit to, to hire? The first hardworking candidate who actually analyzed the situation gave you an answer, but took 30 minutes to do so? Or the more experienced second candidate who already knew a similar answer, but gave, gave a quick enough answer? I'm Sriram Devata. And my YSP project has been, some, uh, has been to assess a method called NEEMS, which is an EIMS prediction method. I'm, I'm doing a course called Computational Natural Sciences at IIIT Hyderabad, International Institute of Information Technology, Hyderabad, in India. So now that you have an overview of what the prob, uh, an analog of what the project is about, let me explain a bit about what EIMS actually is. Electron ionization mass spectrometry is a technique used to identify unknown compounds and unknown molecules. So how it works is that you take, a, uh, you take an unknown sample, you heat the sample up so that you uh, get gaseous molecules, and then you bombard those molecules with a lot of electrons. And since these electrons have a lot of energy, once they hit the molecule, they break apart the molecule into multiple charged fragments. Since these fragments are charged, they recombine, and then they break again and recombine again, since they are constantly being bombarded by the electrons. And at this point, after all this uh, fragmentation and the reforming patterns, you'll end up with molecules that should be stable enough. And once you get the molecules that should, once you get the fragments that should be stable enough, you pass it into a spectrometry machine, which are huge machines that you typically have in lab laboratories. And then you characterize these fragments with their masses and the charges. Typically, most of these fragments will have a charge of plus one. So even if you do take the ratio of the mass to charge, it's just going to be their mass. So on the screen right here, you have a, what a mass spectra typically looks like. So as you can see here, we have the m by z, uh, the m by z values, which are the mass to charge ratios. And then you have one particular intensity. So what's the intensity over here? And since, uh, after, you, uh, after you get different fragments, you see that the fragments are structured differently. Each fragment has a different a distribution in the total number of fragments. You take the most frequently occurring fragment and give it a value of 100. That's the maximum intensity that a fragment can have. And the other, and the other fragments are uh, expressed relative to the most frequently occurring fragment. And so once you do this, if you repeat uh, the mass spectra experiment for the same molecule multiple times, you'll end up with predictable uh, intensities. Now, if you have a database of all the mass spectra possible, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty apparent that you, uh, you can uh, predict what an unknown compound is. Since the fragmentations are pretty much predictable, once you, take, once you find the mass spectra of an, un uh, of an unknown compound and you compare it with a database of mass spectra that you already have, it is possible to figure out what functional groups there are. Functional groups are a specific set of atoms in a, in a, uh, in a molecule that give it certain chemical properties. And once you know what functional groups there are in the unknown molecule, and after figuring out what the masses of uh, masses are, you can uh, reasonably predict what that uh, unknown compound might be. But this is where the problem arises. How do you make such a database? Obviously, it's not possible to take every single molecule in the universe and then run it through a mass spectrometry machine to get the results. And take an astrobiology context, for example, what if the target place has a different general chemistry from what you have on Earth? What if your database is not relevant there? So that's where a question of computationally uh, predicting the mass spectra comes up. What if we can create our own database? What if we don't need machinery to, to make a database? And that's where we have, we, are, and we have a lot of computational EIMS prediction methods. And one such method is called QC EIMS. That stands for quantum chemistry EIMS. So QC, how QCMS works is it takes a molecule and it calculates the bond breaking probability. So it sees, it looks at the strength of each bond and calculates if that bond is likely to break. 
and once it figures out which bonds are most likely to break, it will predict the fragments that arise after those bonds are breaking. But the only problem is, since it does a lot of quantum chemistry calculations, it takes a lot of time and a lot of computational power. Another recent method is called NEEMS, which is Neural EIMS. And what NEEMS does is it converts the molecule into a binary string, a, a string with only zeros and ones. And then it passes this string into a neural network. And a neural network essentially looks at that string, it looks at the zeros and ones, and makes predictions as to what the uh, outward mass spectra might be. Now, how do you compare how good the metric is? There are many metrics that you can compare it on. Some of them are RMSD, MAD, and RRT. So RMSD and MAD are straightforward mathematical uh, formulas, which are not really too special. But RRT is something that I'd like to speak about since it's pretty interesting. So to calculate RRT for NEEMS, what I did was you take a molecule and you find out all the possible isomers of that molecule. Isomers are uh, those molecules which have the same chemical formula but they are structured differently. And once you have all the isomers, ask NEEMS to predict every single one of those, uh, one of those uh, mass spectra. You have the NEEMS predict, uh, prediction of the molecule and you have the NEEMS, NEEMS prediction of every single isomer. And now compare each of these isomers, isomers NEEMS prediction with the NEEMS prediction of the actual molecule, and then rank them in the order that they are uh, most similar. So in the uh, random example that I've taken, I've seen that the NEEMS prediction of isomer three is most similar. And then isomer two is the next most similar to the NEEMS prediction. And now take the actual experimental EIMS of the molecule. This is something that you can find on, you can, you can find standard values for. And now see how similar the experimental EIMS is compared with the NEEMS of the actual molecule. And then add that into the same ranking system. Where do you think it would rank? In this particular example here, I see that isomer three is still the most similar. Isomer two is the next best similar. And the experimental EIMS is third, thirdly ranked. Ideally, if you take the, uh, if the prediction method is absolutely perfect, it's supposed to rank the first since it's supposed to be the most similar to the actual uh, mass spectra value. But since it's not, it's a good metric to figure out how good the prediction method is. So is NEEMS actually good? There are still a lot of gaps to be filled and a lot of work to be done. But at this point, I can say that yes, NEEMS actually is pretty good compared to QCIMS and other computational methods. And not only that, it also has a very, it also has very little computational cost and gives you results at, at much quicker paces. So further, uh, further, further a study on this front can include uh, studying about how the neural network actually predicts the mass spectra because at this point, neural, neural networks are essentially black boxes. Since you enter, you give it the bit string of the molecule and it gives back the actual mass, mass spectra prediction. But we don't know what the neural network actually looks at. Does it look at every single atom in the molecule? Does it look at all the bonds? Does it look at both of them? Does it only look at part of the molecule? That's questions. Those are questions that we can try to answer once we figure out what the neural network is actually looking at. And not, this is done only for an electron ionization mass spectra. And the same concept can be applied for other types of mass spectra as well. That all you have to do is just train the uh, prediction method. I'd really like to thank Dr. James Cleese and Dr. Marcus Meringer for directing the project. They spent a lot of time and resources guiding me and this project in the right direction. And I would, I'd also like to thank BMSIS for connecting this wonderful program with I got to do this project. I'd like to know if you have any questions right now, or anything regarding the concept itself or how I coded it up, or if you have any questions you want to ask. Thank you, Shuram. Um, there's a question for you in the chat from uh, Dimitra Akin, who mm -hmm. asks, does the distribution of fragments during EIMS depend on the energy of the electron? Uh, actually, so uh, the process of finding the mass spectrum, electron ionization mass spectrum in experimental methods are pretty uh, constant. So you have electrons of about 70 electron volts, uh, but this, uh, it shouldn't really uh, matter uh, how much energy the electron actually has because uh, 70 electron volts is much higher energy compared to what the actual bond uh, strengths are. 
So you say 70 electron volts or 69 electron volts or 68, it shouldn't really make a difference since it's on a very different scale from the bond energies themselves. So the fragmentation pattern should be uh, the same thing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? I'm not able to see the chat. I am sorry. That's okay. Any other questions for Sharam? If not, Patel, I have one more though. Could you mm -hmm. use that, that neural analysis to recreate the database of known spectra and take that even further? So increase the size of the known database. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's uh, that's what you can try to build too. For example, you can uh, try to build on the existing database, or if you want to look at other chemistries that are different, you can try to build the database from scratch up too. But uh, I wouldn't really suggest on uh, building up on the present database for normal use because we are not entirely sure how uh, accurate it is because experimental data is much more valuable than the predicted data right now. So it's really possible to actually build up the present database as well, and that will definitely increase the comparisons that we do with new compounds so that we can find out more uh, unknown compounds using EIMS. Okay, thank you, great. Yep, and so I'd like to tell you what I actually learned during this project, apart from all the technical details. There's a lot of hype in the general public about new discoveries and new techniques and pushing the frontiers of science, but that was what I was thinking about too, but then, if there are no studies or if there are no reviews about how good these discoveries are or how accurate these studies are, how do we even know if these new discoveries are good? I think the process of uh, review or peer review is something that some of you might have gone through and I do not think that you had a good experience with that, but it really shows how important a review is. That's how we increase the quality of the science that we produce and we encourage uh, collaboration in the scientific community. If you ever want to talk to me about my, this project or any other project, you can contact me on either of my email IDs or you can find me on any professional or social media as Thank you so much. Thank you for your time.